All right, here we go back up on the bench, guys. I was going to take this out and run it in its stock form. This is my Axial SMT uh, Maximum Destruction uh, truck. I unboxed this a few episodes ago on my channel. Uh, such an awesome looking rig. And uh, this truck was very difficult to source. I got it out of Australia. I found it on eBay. Uh, it is discontinued, unfortunately, but the almighty grave digger is still available if you can check that out and of course maybe you can score one of these on eBay as well so uh, I got my J concepts box in here I put in an order for uh, some tires and some rims uh, and uh, I wanted to have a look at that because these tires are supposedly the uh, the monster mud truck tires to have so these ones even though they're beautiful and wide and would float on top of the mud very well I'm gonna be going for a skinnier more aggressive tread pattern and I uh, want to have a look at their uh, rims as well. I know some of you will be disappointed I didn't run this in its stock form. I do apologize um, but I'll tell you during you can see at the time of this filming it is during the holiday season and it's very busy for me as well as I like to run it when the weather is nice. Oh man I am so glad. Guys look at this. An exact reason why I only have my blade of my knife out just a little bit right on top where the tires look at this did i cut them i did not i did not cut them thank goodness it was only the depth of the of the uh of the box hey heads up to that that's a really good lesson yeah new tires feed locks and orange rings it's amazing what they're offering these days uh 3d printed I wonder if those are 3D printed. Kind of looked like it a little bit. Let me see here. Eh, maybe not. The tracker wheel discs orange bolt-on set. I'd like to actually have a look at this. I've never ordered from J Concepts before, but this uh, these wheels were just too good to pass up. So what are these rings actually like? Well, they're not 3D printed, actually. They're injection mold. And they're very lightweight. Not bad. What can I say about two rings, right? Except they should be great inserts to make it pop the color. I still want to stay with the neon orange of maximum destruction there. Here is what I really wanted to look at today. The Fling King Blue Compound Soft. These are huge tires. Look at the tread on the inside. Wow! Wow, guys, look at this. That is insane. Okay, I am now officially in love with the J Concepts tires, the Fling Kings. Holy smokes. That's the most aggressive mud tread I've ever seen. Okay, except for um, you guys will be like saying to me, what about the 2.2? Uh, mud flingers, I think. I can't remember the RC four-wheel drive tire. Um, this is definitely, let me see, I have one of them somewhere. Let me find it. There you go. The Mud Basher tractor tire. One of the largest 2.2 uh, size tires you can get on the market today for trail trucks. In fact, this is what I have on the Monster Mudstang. Uh, which I kind of converted over to an ATV driver. This is an Axial SCX-10 trail truck, uh, and that tire is absolutely enormous. That's an eighth scale body you can see there from my old Savage uh, XL, I believe, the nitro version. They look slightly smaller, I think only because it has more of the uh, tread sticking out. The lugs are much deeper, so it doesn't look at the same as this one. Definitely the same... Uh, um, size overall. If anything, the RC four-wheel drive tire is just like a millimeter larger, but that's just by eyeballing it. Having a look at the tires side by side, look at this. You can see the lugs are actually supremely different, much deeper on the J Concepts tire. So I also, when I ordered it up, paired it with these uh, Dragon um, wheels, you can see a 2.6 mega truck, uh, 12 millimeter hex wheel with offset adapters and discs, two piece. 
Uh, the only reason I'm pointing these out is because they seem to be the thing on the website to go with the tires. No, this is not sponsored by J Concepts. They don't even know that I'm doing this video, um, other than I'm just interested in the products, which is pretty much how the show usually runs. They're not beadlocks. These are gluing tires. Oh, no! What? What about these discs? I misunderstood. That's okay. And these discs must come. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. So what, they just screw on like that or what? That's exactly what they do. Remember, if you're gonna use a drill, make sure that you have got great throttle control, especially when you're using plastic. Because uh, it only takes one second to uh, overturn those screws and strip out a thread, especially in this plastic. These rims uh, actually come with four different offsets. I did go with the larger uh, uh, option here. Uh, the larger option allows me to give a wider stance on this truck, so when I'm jumping or coming down on a bit of an angle, it gives me a little bit more tip resistance. So there's a thumbs up on that, and of course you get the other three uh, just to put on the sidelines if you want to test them out. <laughs> the smell of new tires. I know that sounds crazy, but every hobbyist that does trail trucking knows exactly what I'm talking about, or monster trucking. <laughs> this is an interesting observation. I unbag one t set of tires, and they have all the powder and stuff from the mold on it. And then, of course, I get this one, and it is perfectly clean. Interesting. I wonder why it comes that way. One, one basically a different color than the other. The other thing that's tough when you're gluing tires is getting that bead to sit right uh, in, the, in the actual bead lip uh, before that tire glue sets. So today I'm not actually gluing my tires. I'm just trying to seat these uh, uh, beads where they should be. That way the rubber can kind of get used, uh, used to being there and maybe get a little uh, memory, basically. So when I do go to glue these in the future, everything will basically sit nice where it's supposed to be and it'll be used to, uh, used to be in there. It'll mold itself in there. Okay, I'm gonna use a seven mil just to remove these tires. I really like these tires. They do have a great rubber compound. The softness of it feels very uh, like sticky and grippy. And of course, being these big balloon tires, these would be great on top of the snow, for example, because they do have a great footprint. Here is a problem I did not anticipate. My cross wrench is not long enough to get all the way down there. And my tool, my 7 mil, will not fit down the hole. Hey, look, RC Sparks! Woohoo! Does it still work? Indeed it does. Problem solved. Still lots of meat on here, by the way, for those wondering, very strong still. And while I'm working on the wheels, switching out the back ones, I do have some um, hub carriers right here for the rear. These are aluminums, and it'll stop any kind of flex from happening uh, in the axle housing near the end. So this will improve the strength. Just going to put this drive pin in here. Take a small amount of Loctite. I'm just using a blue Loctite right now just to cinch up these screws. And the reason why I'm doing this is because it's an aluminum hub carrier um, on the back, this straight axle hub carrier. I want to make sure that I don't lose these screws when I'm out uh, bashing around. So top and bottom. So I'm going to take this opportunity now to kind of show you the difference between the two tires. You can see the offset actually widening the stance considerably away from the truck, as well as you can see the tire is super skinny. 
So I imagine I'm going to have some good cornering as long as I don't see a lot of tire fold uh, in the side walls, as well as the offsite, offset might be a little bit too big, uh, but I still want to try it with a nice wide truck to see what kind of power we can get. Yes, I totally expect uh, to snap an axle stub or an axle because of the offset that's in place. That 32 mils is quite a bit. So Max D in all its glory right there. That's what she said, totally. Uh, here you go. There's the tires on there, guys. They are looking very gnarly, very aggressive. Uh, these, you know, definitely going to hold their own. Uh, and of course, I'll be swapping back and forth uh, the tires, of course, to try them out. Uh, uh, and I can pretty much go back to stock right now just by switching the tires out, but not after this next step. Let me remove the body. One of the things I noticed in the last video I pointed out was as soon as I put a 3S LiPo in there, just 4,000 milliamp hour, I had quite a bit of sag in the rear end suspension, which I do not like that. Um, so I had to, to uh, pre-tension those coils considerably, uh, and I'd like to take that off just so I can have the geometry of the truck, the suspension, work the way I would like. Uh, so on eBay I went. I do a lot of eBay shopping over the years. That's probably my biggest place that I do most to my shopping for the show uh, this is hot racing normally I'd stay away from hot racing stuff only because I've had mixed uh, results with them uh, but their 120 millimeter internal spring air shocks are very good I haven't had any issue I won't be running any uh, uh, fluid on the inside because these shocks that already have fluid are going to be balancing them out what am I talking about I'm going to be doubling up on the shocks right now taking this top perch moving it to the outside uh, uh, of the shock hanger as well as this shock perch moving it over on the arms it already comes with a second position for another set of shocks here I'm hooking one shock up already and I thought to myself gee whiz you guys never even saw unless you saw the last video what the difference was going to be so let's bend it on its side right now without the second shock hooked up very squishy and then immediately after the shocks are installed, let's have a listen. Big difference. Still lots of flex, but it really takes away the need for me to have all that preload on that collar. Like I had it all the way down to here. So now I don't need to do that. I still have a great suspension. Let's see if I can do this. Beautiful. I'm loving that already. Straight off the bat, this is absolute sexiness. Uh, yes, these 32 mil offset might be a little bit too wide, especially uh, for this body. Um, but I gotta tell you, even if they are too wide, I wanna try them out anyway. I might break an axle or two, who knows. Uh, but it is snow out there, so I doubt I'll have too much weight. And that's the beautiful thing about this truck overall. It weighs absolutely nothing. I'm going to drop a brushless system in here, really kind of put some power to the ground, uh, get the rest of the suspension system set up the way I'd like it, possibly uh, source out a new body. Of course, if I keep this one, I'll be adding all the spikes to it. Uh, get a few more popping colors. I want to beef up the front end, uh, the steering hubs. Uh, the spindles, of course, everything like that I want to get in, put some aluminum in there. Also some trailing arms. I want to make sure that these suspension arms are uh, not these plastic ones. I want to, you know, plastic's nice, but I want to make sure they're nice and strong. Maybe some carbon fiber and aluminum. Uh, but there you go, guys. Such a neat looking vehicle. These tires over here from RC Four Wheel Drive, uh, they do not have those big cut lugs and they just happen to hold a lot of mud. I'm hoping these big lugs right here actually don't hold the mud and with the proper power from a brushless setup, three or possibly four S LiPo that I put into here, depending on what I decide to do, uh, it should fly the mud out and really lose a lot of that weight that uh, was burdening my other truck. So guys, thanks a lot. I know it was a little bit of a dry build video today, but we gotta have that from time to time to get to the really awesome mud flinging, snow flinging times, but I like my building.
upgrading and stuff, you know, I always had a saying, if it ain't broke, just upgrade it, right? Because you always want to be working on your RC no matter what. So guys, thanks a lot. Get outside, have some fun with a hobby you know I love. I'm sure you're going to love it too. Leave a comment. Click the like button. It does help the show. I love reading all the comments and we'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Now get outside and have some fun with RC. You know I always do. Bye-bye.